What's your next call? <laughs> My next call. Put me on the spot. <laughs> Listen, I mean, to start with, you know, trees don't grow to the sky, and the pace of this move has been really fast. And so on one hand, lots of the speculative uh, you know, sensors are out. You know, the amount of retail customers coming in, the amount of phone calls I get, uh, that gets me a little bit nervous that we could have a short-term top. On the other hand, when I step back, I'm like, wait a minute. The whole market cap of all the crypto is $300 billion. That's nothing. Uh, the, the NASDAQ at its high in the 1999 bubble was $6 trillion. And the NASDAQ was a U.S.-led, you know, bubble. This is a global phenomenon. 60, 70 percent of all trading volume in these cryptos are happening in Japan and Korea. And so I have a sense that this is going to go a lot further. When I try to think of valuation, Bitcoin really has taken the use case of digital gold. Gold's eight trillion or seven and a half trillion dollars. And so at 150 billion Bitcoin, you know, 30 times, 40 times, 50 times higher than here, uh, then you're starting to look like Bitcoin's replaced gold, um, or at least it's, it's on parity of gold. And so my short-term call, I guess, is things have gone pretty far, and maybe you'll backfill a little bit. But in, over the medium term, you know, this thing is going to go a lot, lot higher. I, I said recently I thought total market cap by the end of next year would be a trillion. You know, that's probably a little light. But if it's a trillion to two trillion, that's kind of 6x from where we are now. And that's, it's not all going to go into Bitcoin. 60,000 from where we are? I'm sorry, six, six times. Six, oh, six, six times. times, okay. Six times 200. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, 300 billion. Six times 300 billion gets you a $2 trillion market cap by the end of 2018. And, you know, there's Ethereum, there's Bitcoin, there's Bitcoin Cash, there's EOS, there's all kinds of protocols. So what are the assumptions? I mean, you made the, the parallel to the NASDAQ during the bubble days and the total market cap of the Nasdaq back then. What is the assumption on how high, how high Bitcoin could go? Is there an assumption in your well, head? Well, I look at is, gold. Is, is, it, and is it all of the market cap of gold right now? Uh, that why Bitcoin why, why not in some ways? And so each of these tokens represent individual ecosystems, right? There's one for cloud computing. There's one for file sharing. There's one for online gambling. Bitcoin is, is the, the ecosystem of digital money or digital store wealth. And it's really more digital store wealth or digital gold. And so if gold's $8 trillion, I'm not, I don't understand why Bitcoin can't get there. Uh, so, Mike, everybody asks me, what derails this? What keeps you up at night, right? We know the bull case is working, but you wake up one day and this one thing happens. What is it that scares you? Well, I'd hate for myself to get hacked because that would really suck. <laughs> um, but a, a really major exchange being hacked in a major way. We've had plenty of small hacks, people, and, and small in comparison to market cap but a major hack or a real change of, of, of mindset on the regulators. Uh, right now, most regulators have been working with the system. Uh, we work a lot ourselves with the regulators. Uh, if for some reason they woke up and did an about face, that would, would be no good. So Mike, you mentioned that you're kind of getting a little nervous about this speculative fervor. You know, I've heard you on a few occasions talk about you started buying Ethereum in the low, it's single digits, right? Yes. And so now it's, it's just below 500. So yeah. how do you get, you know, all these people are opening up these hundreds of thousands of Coinbase accounts just in the last couple of weeks. How do you go out and talk to these people about what the opportunity is? For you, you knew that you could lose a few dollars when you paid a few dollars for Ethereum. Now it's almost $500. And it's really hard to talk about the long-term vision to $2 trillion in all of these. You know what I mean? So how do you, how does so what, what I tell about? people, you know, the retail type customer, I said, Put one to three percent of your net worth in it, because if it goes down fifty percent, it's like buying one to three percent of Google, and it goes down fifty percent. Uh, for wealthier people who can afford a little bigger loss, yeah, take it to five percent or even ten percent. Uh, but I don't recommend anybody throw their entire net worth into. This. What is your net worth uh, in terms of how much is tied up? In, in you know, I'm probably over twenty percent at this point, and uh, wow. you know, because it keeps going up, and I take some off, and then I get, well, why am I taking it off? And I buy more, and maybe right. it's even thirty percent. Um, what do you think about futures? The CME is going to launch its futures for Bitcoin. Um, December 10th is the date right now. What does that do to Bitcoin, if anything? Does it suppress volatility? Does it cause more volatility? I think in the short run, uh, the future will not be as exciting as people are hoping it will, because it's going to take a while for it to, to build liquidity. Uh, the really promising part of the future, though, is when you have a future, you'll need a stock borrow. 
you know, and all of a sudden you'll have a lending market in Bitcoin. And as soon as you have a lending market in Bitcoin, guess what? Then you have an interest rate curve in Bitcoin. And all of a sudden, Bitcoin starts looking more like a currency than it ever did. Uh, you know, it's very difficult right now. That's not there's not an efficient market to buy it, to borrow or, uh, uh, or lend against uh, all of these coins. And I think the future market will really accelerate that.